Good morning on day 16. We're about to dig in. And Nate, even though you just put that in your mouth, I was about to ask you to uh, give us a quick rundown of a typical Swedish breakfast. Well, there are a lot of um, vegetables and meats and cheeses and mm -hmm. breads. And you put those together into a lovely little sandwich like so. Yeah. Um, oatmeal or granola with mm -hmm. sour milk. It's <laughs> pretty good. Sour milk. Yeah, that one's a little different. Crackers. Crackers. Crackers are big at breakfast. Yeah. And brie cheese. cheese. Yeah, there's always cheese. Um, and then there are these little things today, which we haven't tried yet. Yeah, that's not always there, but sweet treats. Yay. Um, the other thing that's not on Nate's plate is jam. Lots of jam that goes with everything. And, um, you know, it varies a little bit, but I'd say those are the, uh, those are the main pieces. Mm -hmm. Yum. Mm. Well, we are on our way out of Amarnas after a pleasant little stay here. Um, the way we timed the supermarket, we kind of had to stay a little later today. It's a weekend, so it closed kind of early on Saturday afternoon and then late on Sunday morning. And so um, we're getting kind of a midday-ish start here out of Amarnas. Um, but I didn't mind. I enjoy having a little bit of downtime <laughs> in town um, whenever we can have it. Um, this is the last section of the Kungsleden um, from Amarnas to Hemaven, which is the southern terminus. Um, so uh, that's kind of a strange feeling. Um, all trails to me always seem both long and short at the same time. Even, you know, the varying distances that I've done, they always seem both long and short. <laughs> like they, you get to the end and it's uh, you feel like you've worked to get there, so it feels a little bit long, but also like... How is it already over? So, uh, we have about three days. No, we have exactly three days um, to get to Hemaven. Since this is the end of the trip for us, we've decided to go ahead and book like accommodations and bus tickets and things like that. Um, for Nate, this is also business. The Kungsleden part has been vacation um, but he actually has some work to do over here in Sweden and so to be able to properly plan for that we needed to go ahead and book everything so we are definitely going to be arriving in three days um, today will not be you know the longest day since we're getting a late start which means that tomorrow and the next day will maybe be kind of long because we've kind of set a time limit on ourselves But if we keep up anywhere near the miles that we've been able to do the past few days, uh, we should get there no problem. So as long as nothing unforeseen happens, which of course it always can, um, yeah, three more days, it'll be end of the Kungsleden in Hemaven. So let's get to this, uh, this final section. This is the first time we've seen cows actually on this trail. It's always been reindeer, but here we have cows. You can see on the hill there some ski slopes. Uh, it definitely looks like uh, this part of Sweden has quite a winter culture. And uh, you can especially see that in this city and I think also in Hemaven. I mean, you can tell just, you know, these are winter trail markings right here. So definitely a lot of winter life as well, which is neat. Nice map here. We will be walking in large, in some part through the Vindfjallens hmm, nature reserve. Uh, wind mountains, as far as I can roughly translate. Hopefully the mountains are not as windy as their name indicates. We have a super impressive waterfall here, and I hope you can hear me over it because it's quite loud. But so there's, there's that part. And then it drops super drastically. I'll show you. You can kind of see it below us here. Through there. And then this is quite a long, steep, like, drop canyon down. So 
they have uh, they have fencing so that people don't fall into this canyon trying to get a look at this waterfall. That's pretty neat. About to have a new culinary experience with the Wasa Cracker Taco Sandwich. Oh, nice. Little look back down into Amarnath and the surrounding hillsides as we're climbing out of town. Ooh, at the moment, this area is living up to its windy name. It's pretty windy up here at the top. You can see all the trees blowing and tilted to, uh, to my right. So this section has a return of the STF huts. This is the first one, Eigerstugen, I think, something along those lines. So Nate, you're also trying the taco sandwich cracker. What's your conclusion? Um, Taco Bell could include these. I think it would be good. <laughs> mm, tasty. Yeah, yeah, I actually thought they were pretty yummy as well. Well, it has been a wind in your face sort of climb up. You can see the valley with the lake way, way down there. We're about to kind of turn a corner so you won't be able to see that as much anymore because uh, we are sort of kind of at the top here. We'll see how many tops are kind of beyond this one, but looks like we're close. at the top of this climb. Oh. Wow. It's like a very windy moonscape, sort of. What a beautiful and incredibly welcome little wind shelter, man. It's been a blustery afternoon. We're excited to get in there and take a break in the wind shelter, a little bit, a little bit wind blown. I am anyway. Nate. I might, yeah, I might be too. I might be too. Whew, this was a super welcome break. It was windy out there. Yes. I don't know how else to say it. Well, that was a nice break. Um, the views are honestly pretty stunning. It's just, uh, it's just cold and windy and, uh, and a bit cloudy. You can see some clouds rolling in um so basically we're gonna run to the next wind shelter which is a few miles away <laughs> look very pretty standing against that dark sky against the hill, we go see our next hut. I think we made pretty good time so far, considering the distance. And uh, 
Let's see what it's like when we get there. Well, happily the wind has really quite died down on this side of the mountain, but uh, that is still looking like a really nice place for dinner.